Hello everyone, this is Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are staying safe and you're staying healthy. I hope you are also getting some creative time in in this uh, stay home in shelter order. Um, I've been doing a lot of water coloring projects these days because it's been so therapeutic to me. So today I have another watercolor coloring project to share with you. Last time I did a white embossing no line water coloring type of a thing and this time we're just gonna do a very simple straightforward water coloring for a stamping image or stamped image so i have this beautiful image from alton news statement flowers stamp set this is actually one of the brand new release for april 2020 and it is just strikingly beautiful and i love the details and i also love the fact that the image is big enough where you can easily watercolor so that's one of the reasons i specifically chose this for watercoloring i know watercoloring is still a daunting technique for many of you if you're not familiar with it so i want to share this with you so you feel more confident knowing that i am in no way a professional watercolorist and i just enjoy coloring stamped images and if i can do it you can do it easily so we are going to start by adding some colors onto the first petal so i use the obsidian black ink to stamp the image onto a watercolor paper from altenew i am using the 9 by 12 watercolor paper pad there is also a a2 size watercolor sheets that you can get the texture is a little bit different for these two i like to have a little bit of texture the a2 size sheets are tiny tiny more tiny tiny bit more softer so if you like a more of a softer finish go with the a2 size sheet um, if you want more texture go with the 9 by 12 watercolor paper pad so i cut it to a size that i want this is five and a half by four and a half and then we're going to just color this in I am using watercolor brush markers, a spring garden set from Altenew to color in the images for today's project. So what I am doing is I am choosing one petal at a time to drop in the pigment. And as I go through and around the flower, I'm going to skip a petal. That way the first inked or the colored image is um, going to get some drying time naturally so that it won't bleed in too much when I color into the next one later on. So I skipped one section petal and then I'm going to the next one. What I am doing is I am taking my watercolor brush and dropping in a clean water onto a uncolored petal section first and I'm going to drop in a pigment using a marker or picking up a pigment with my watercolor brush from my palette. Um, this gives me a better control of the colors. Also, you can use the barrel of the watercolor brush to add in clean water and you can squeeze it out, but I like picking it up from my palette that I have right next to me because it just gives me a better control of the clean water. And you can also pick up some from the jar that you might have next to you just gives you a better control of it but if you're going for a convenience you can definitely use the barrel of the watercolor brush body I have shared this before in my previous watercolor projects so when you're watercoloring keep in mind that it's always easier to go back and add more colors than lifting the colors up to make it lighter so start little by little add a little bit of color and then go back to it to add more colors if you want to intensify it. You will see me going back and forth between petals after each section is dried. That way I can add more colors. When you add more and more colors as the petal is still wet, it's just not going to give you a very good of a gradation or ombre or shading effect. So it's always better for you to let it dry for a little bit and then go back with more color and then a little bit of water to re-blend in the section. That will give you a more of a softer, better blended results in the end. 
And keep in mind that watercolor always dries much softer, so the color intensity will likely to be lessened or weakened when it's fully dried. So keep that in mind. While working on this project, you only need a very little bit of water. So while I'm using a watercolor brush, I am not adding any water onto the barrel itself. You can technically squeeze it out to let the water flow, but it'll give me a better control if I actually dip my brush into a jar of clean water or use a clean water drops that I dropped onto my palette next to me. You just need a very little bit to pre-wet the section before dropping in the pigment. And I am going directly with my watercolor brush to drop in the pigment onto an area where I want things to be darkest. These watercolor brushes are highly, highly pigmented and very concentrated, so you only need a little bit to blend it in. And like I said before, you can always go back to add more colors if you want. So without more explanation, I'm going to go ahead and speed up a little bit so you can enjoy the whole process and watch me color. And I hope the coloring process kind of helps you get the idea that, that you might need and might be helpful for your next water coloring project. Uh, one more thing, if you have a clean tissue, make sure you have one handy while working on this because sometimes if you do um, add a little bit of water too much, it could bleed into the next area that you don't want things to blend in. So you'll see me use a clean tissue to pick up pigments a couple times here and there, but that's just something, I, one quick tip that you might want to keep in mind. So I'm going to let you enjoy the whole coloring process and I'll pick up the voiceover after I'm done coloring.
so I am almost done coloring. The last color I'm using is Warm Sunshine from the Spring Garden Watercolor Brush Marker Set and added a, a center portion of the flower. I wanted to add some white splatter on top of the watercolor just to add some texture. And what I did is I took out the pure white watercolor from the artist marker set and I just added some pigment onto my palette and picked it up with thick watercolor brush and dropped some. And I didn't like the intensity of it, so it was just a little too transparent for my liking. So I went back to the project using the pure white spray that we have, the ink spray, and added some white pigment by tapping the nozzle above it. And on top of that, I went back to the image with some iridescent ink spray and add some clear shine onto it. So I dropped some and I'm going to let this dry. I just like adding some splatters onto it. You definitely don't need to, but this just adds some interest and I love the different texture that's going on of the watercolored project. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to clean up my work surface and we can go ahead and prep for the watercolor assembly or the card assembly when everything is done. I like to make sure that my panel is fully dried. You can heat set it if you want using a heat tool or hair dryer. I like to just kind of let it stay there for a little bit to naturally dry. And then I trimmed it so that it'll be a four by five and a quarter so that I can put it on top of my A2 size card base. What I did here is to keep the watercolor panel flat and straight and I didn't have any fun foam tape with me to adhere it. I took out a 80 pound cardstock, Nina color, Nina Solar White cardstock, and I added a bunch of Be Creative adhesive on one side of the paper. And this is going to reinforce or enforce the watercolor paper to stay straight and flat and not stay warped. We did add a bit of water onto a whole panel while coloring it. So this is the exact reason why I decided to do it. So I added a bunch of strips of Be Creative tape on one side of the cardstock, and we're going to adhere that right on top of, or right underneath of the watercolor panel that we colored. So you're just going to start with one end, line it up, and then push it gradually as you go. Obviously, if you have a fun foam pad, use that to enforce the panel to stay straight and flat. Or if you want a more flushed card and not added dimensions, you can just adhere this whole panel onto your card base directly. So this feels a little bit enforced. I am happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and add some foam tape on the back of it. Before I do that, I'm going to stamp the sentiment. And I stamped Hello Sentiment from the same stamp set. Um, I think my stamp had a little bit of residue on it from processing the clear stamp. So I had a little bit of smudges, but it's okay. Um, I'll just live with it. And I'm going to add some foam tape on the back of the panel. And we'll go ahead and attach this whole thing onto a A2 size card base. I cut a letter size cardstock into a half vertically. So it's four and a quarter by 11. And then I scored it at five and a half. I created a top folding card base and we added the panel right on top of it. And there you have it. That's the project for today. I hope this gave you some helpful tips and you enjoyed watching the process of watercoloring. I hope you do the same and get some therapeutic creativity session. If you enjoyed today's video, please give a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my channel, that would be very helpful to keep this channel going. All the products that I used in today's video are listed in the description area right below the video, or you can head over to my blog at scrapsandstamps.com to check out a new blog post along with close-up photos and a fun giveaways. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.